Nope, your eyes do not deceive you, this is in fact a Destiny 1 video. In today's video we'll be covering the topic of the elusive white whale. That weapon that you thought maybe had a perfect combination of perks, but you were just never able to obtain it because of RNG. For those unfamiliar with the term, RNG means random number generator, and it's a term that gamers typically associate with luck. But exactly how lucky do you have to be to obtain this perfect variant of the stolen pride? That's uh, the hand cannon in the thumbnail in the title, by the way. Before I get into the exact luck behind obtaining this hand cannon in the first place, let's talk about the hand cannon. What makes it special? Why would you even want this thing? Well, as it turns out, the answer is pretty simple. It kills faster than the renowned AS Luna. For my Destiny veterans and skeptics out there, you're probably wondering, where's the catch? And you're smart to think that. There is a catch. If you pay attention to the background footage, you'll see that the AS Luna hand cannon kills in one headshot and two body shots. This is primarily the reason... See what I did there? Because AS Luna is a primary... Okay, don't, don't unsubscribe. Anyhow, this is primarily the reason that AS Luna rose to prominence as one of the best hand cannons. Only having to hit one headshot combined with two body shots with its stellar range made for an all-around excellent hand cannon. But if you were unfortunate enough to play against a smart opponent, they would know that because most people use AS Luna, the smartest thing for them to do is to up their resilience slash armor stat. This would result in the AS Luna having to hit an extra headshot. Instead of one headshot, two body shots, it would now be two headshots, one body shot. Here's where the Stolen Pride comes back into the picture. If you're playing an opponent with high resilience, high armor, the Stolen Pride will still 3-tap, two to the head, one to the body, exactly the same shot requirement as the AS Luna. Except, the Stolen Pride kills faster. But again, Destiny veterans and Destiny skeptics, I know you're in the comments section, and you're thinking, but wait, Cammy, there's another catch. What about the range stat? What about the damage drop-off? I got you covered. After taking a variety of god roll max range hand cannons to the firing range, aka Bannerfall and having my friend stand on the heavy ammo box so we can use it as a range finder, these are the results of the range drop-off tests. Don't be afraid of the numbers, I'll explain what's important about this chart really simply. The numbers in yellow is where you start to see your hand cannon drop off in damage. There you go, you understood the chart. We can then use the information from that chart for this chart, which shows the maximum distance in which you can two head, one body shot kill your target. To understand that chart better, let me refresh you on how the explosive rounds perk works. For guns that have it, like the palindrome you see in the background, the way explosive rounds works is that it splits the bullet into two damage portions. One the explosive portion, and the other the bullet portion. What's very interesting is that the bullet portion does experience damage drop off, but the explosive portion never experiences drop off no matter how far away you are from the target, so it will hit that crisp 29 damage every single time. But if you had explosive rounds on the stolen pride, it would hit 26 instead of 29 for the explosive bullet portion because it's a different archetype. It shoots faster. This side effect of explosive rounds is particularly useful when cleaning up with a sniper body shot. So if you're across the map as far as you can possibly be in the back of the spawn and you body shot somebody with a sniper rifle and then clean them up with a normal non-explosive hand cannon, chances are you're not going to be able to do enough damage to kill them with a body shot. But with an explosive hand cannon, there's a good chance, depending on resilience, that you kill them. But if that wasn't reason enough to use explosive rounds, they have an additional benefit. They cause a lot of flinch. Essentially, it creates a recreation of the Porygon Pokemon episode and gives your opponent a seizure mid-gunfight. Oh yeah, and the best part about having explosive rounds on the Stolen Pride is that it shoots faster than the AS Luna or Palindrome, so that means... Goddamn bullshit! Yeah, what Mr. Torg said. If it shoots faster, that means more explosions on your opponent's screen, which means more flinch. But of course, that's at the trade-off of the rifled barrel perk, which increases your hand cannon's range. Not to uh, rehash any bad memories, but the more range your hand cannon has, the less it's going to be afflicted by... I actually just physically look behind me for some reason, but the less it'll be affected by... Ghost busters! Bullets! Bullets! Bullets. When you aim your gun, but you can't hit shit, who you gonna blame? Blame Bungie. 
Okay, I promise to keep the musicals to a minimum. Don't unsubscribe, please. Anyhow, the range on a weapon is tied to how consistent the weapon feels, how consistent the bullets magnetize to your targets. One would think that by running the explosive round perk, you would be giving up rifled barrel and all the range that comes with the rifled barrel perk. One would think. However, you've never owned a god roll stolen pride. How do I know you've never owned a god roll stolen pride? Well, that's because Chazmat713, which uh, thank you for letting me borrow your account for sake of this video, by the way. Chazmat713 is the only person I have ever seen have this gun. So yeah, if you read between the lines, this is what I'm trying to allude to. The stolen pride can get range finder, which increases the range when you aim down sights. It can get rifled barrel, which increases the range. And it can also get explosive rounds and equipped all three perks at the same time. But just how lucky do you have to be to obtain this hand cannon in the first place? Where do you get it? You have a rare chance of getting a legendary weapon or armor piece from an old Destiny activity called Psylocke the Defile. Destiny 1 memes aside, you get this from the Prison of Elders. On the weekly reset, you get three quick attempts to get a legendary weapon or armor piece. After that, you have to level up the Prison of Elders reputation every single time you want a chance at the drop. And if you're as optimal as you can possibly be, speed running your heart out. After killing trash mobs, defusing mines, killing HPTs, killing mini bosses, killing a big boss with modifiers, climbing to the tallest room of the highest tower, traveling scorching winds and blistering deserts. I don't think I quoted that right, but you do a lot of very boring stuff and it's going to take about an hour per rank up. If you're fast, that is, if you're really fast. So you would do Prison of Elders to fill your reputation bar, and then you'd visit Varix on the reef who would have a package for you. And out of this package, you might get a weapon or armor. When you consider the entirety of Varix's loot pool, it's gonna be roughly 10 items, five weapons and five armor pieces. If you get lucky, you might get a weapon. If you get a weapon, you might get the stolen pride, but I guarantee you, you won't get the perks because to get rangefinder, rifled barrel, and explosive rounds, that's roughly a one-third chance for one perk, a one-fifth chance for one perk, and a one-third chance for the final perk. If you notice the subtle shift to RuneScape music, that's because this item drop chance of getting a stolen pride in the first place with all three perfect perks is so astronomically low that someone would have to be as crazy as a RuneScape player to even consider going for it because in a typical case, you're only getting one pull of the slot machine every single hour. For me personally, I spent about 10 hours a week grinding this out with my friends attempting to get either the hand cannon or the pulse rifle. Because in terms of content, this was one of the driest periods of Destiny, with Destiny 2 looming around the corner, we spent about a good two months doing this ritual. We'd sign on at the weekly reset, do our challenge of the elders, and then over the course of the week spend a few hours here or there just leveling up Prison of Elders reputation every single time we wanted a chance, a pool, at the slot machine, but we mostly just played it to fuck around and warm up for PvP. At the time, I had very bad luck with obtaining a perfect AS Luna, and I was kind of tired of losing gunfights because the other person might have been luckier with their drop RNG and might have a better hand cannon. In an attempt to construct a figurative giant middle finger to those luckier than me, I sought out to actually grind a potentially better hand cannon than the AS Luna. Unfortunately, between the efforts of my clanmates and friends, nobody got their hands on a perfect stolen pride. We got close but it was never perfect, so we couldn't get a true indication of its power. But damn it, we tried. We tried for two months to get this hand cannon, and it never saw the light of day. In fact, I actually went with an alternative role, an alternative hand cannon, the whale. It had luck in the chamber. So the irony of not being lucky enough to obtain the perfect stolen pride, I had to resort to a hand cannon that took advantage of the perk luck in the chamber. For those unaware what luck in the chamber is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a random bullet in your magazine that does 30% extra damage. And so, if you want to take advantage of the perk more, it makes sense to pick a gun with a small magazine. If you happen to get the lucky bullet, you could kill your opponent in two consecutive headshots. There's one thing about luck in the chamber I didn't mention though. Luck in the chamber makes a sound when the lucky bullet is fired. 
so you know when you've used the lucky bullet. I know what some of you are already typing in the comments. You're saying, Cammy, aren't you a big fat hypocrite because you say that you don't like your gunfights coming down to RNG? And you rely on a perk like luck in the chamber? Yes and no. Because it makes a sound when the lucky bullet's used, you can actually dump your entire magazine multiple times until the last two remaining bullets contain the lucky bullet. This can curb the RNG and offer a playstyle that's very high skill and very high risk. Because having to hit headshots in Destiny 1 was a scary concept for some. So I made it my mission to become really really good with these hand cannons. I would intentionally dump the magazine to the last three bullets. If I didn't hear a sound, I wouldn't reload. I would then switch to my sniper rifle. And I would body shot somebody, clean up with the hand cannon, and I would have two shots remaining. If I still didn't hear the lucky sound, I would then take a duel with my hand cannon. If I did hear the sound, I would either reload or switch right back to my snipe. I was so caught up in mastering this absurd playstyle that the stolen pride completely flew under the radar, and me and my friends sort of forgot about it with Destiny 2 right around the corner. Fast forward a little bit, the Destiny 2 betas released, we're all in love with the game. Seriously, for my friend group, our prayers were answered. You couldn't just ape with the shotgun or hardscope in the back of the map with the sniper. Special weapons were now considered power weapons and required map control to obtain. So without special weapons and obnoxious abilities to resort to in every gunfight, people actually used primaries, and for some of the most effective primaries, you had to aim for the face. But the real icing on the cake of this is that weapons were considered fixed roll. They were no longer random. If you had a better devils, it was the same better devils for everybody. Of course, in hindsight, this was a huge mistake for Destiny 2. The overall population just didn't agree with fixed roles and associated Destiny with randomness and being a looter shooter. But when it comes to my personal preference, I hate losing gunfights because someone's luckier. Luckily, in the current state of Destiny 2, that's not so much the case because the best primaries in the game happen to be pinnacle rewards or exotics. But it does beg the question, because considering in Destiny 1 I never got to experience a perfect stolen pride, who's to say that that won't happen in Destiny 2 again? So why can't there be a system that curbs RNG? I'm not asking for re-rolling, but more just a very difficult activity or some very skillful triumph that lets you maybe custom roll a perk or two, just so that instead of a weapon being a 1 out of 30,000 chance, it suddenly becomes a 1 out of 100 chance or a 1 out of 50 chance. Something much more bite-sized and manageable to grind for. For a current day Destiny 2 example, the Dust Rock Blue shotgun is easily farmable in a lost sector, just rinse and repeat, kill the boss, and I would say that your chance of getting the shotgun with a competitive roll is about 1 out of 150 drops. For a perfect roll, or one of the many perfect rolls, those chances, they become pretty astronomical really quickly. So I thought of an idea that could maybe take a lot of the brunt of the randomness off, and it's as follows. Let's say that you have 10 shotguns, 1 Dust Rock Blues equipped, and 9 in your inventory. Let's go visit our friend the gunsmith. Let's sacrifice all nine of the dust rocks in your inventory to change a single perk on your equipped dust rock. But this shit isn't going to be free. It's an MMORPG. In fact, it's going to require a lot of materials. Let's say a hundred master rick cores, a thousand legendary shards, you know, anything that has a guaranteed path to rewards. I understand this isn't a realistic ask with the track record of Destiny 2 thus far, so maybe this could be a feature implemented in Destiny 3? I don't know, if you could think of a better system, let me know in the comment section below. But the bottom line remains, I don't like dying to random elements, Destiny players love random loot. So what's the solution? Why is it that multiple people can go two months without seeing a perfect stolen pride? RNG! I know it's RNG. But it's still kind of lame that multiple people can be in the dark for so long when we just wanted to know if there was a hand cannon that could dethrone AS Luna. Luckily, since my humble Destiny 1 beginnings, I've grown a pretty substantial amount. Thank you guys for subscribing, by the way. Seriously, means the world to me. But through the power of dank memes and Twitter, I was able to hunt somebody down who had the perfect stolen pride. And so this brings me to today's video. Over an entire year later, thanks to Chazmat713, I'm able to answer that question. Is the Stolen Pride the true God Slayer hand cannon? Is this the best hand cannon that never was? Unfortunately, no. In reality, it just didn't stack up to the palindrome or the AS Luna. 
While in certain circumstances it definitely did have an advantage, that advantage was totally pissed away due to the 30 FPS and lack of consistent connections. The time to kill difference between a 150 RPM and a 140 RPM just was not noticeable. And to make matters worse, this was at the cost of 4 meters of range. Hand cannons at the time had abysmal range, so a 4 meter difference was asking to get aped by a shotgun. So yeah, I hate to say it, this hand cannon didn't pan out to be everything it was supposed to be, but the footage in the background shows that the potential is there. I think that if I did obtain that within that two month period, I would have been happy with it. I probably would have used it a lot, and who would have thought that 150 hand cannons would be what I call meta in Destiny 2? Of course, we'd eventually find out that the Not Forgotten Luna's Howl would pretty much do the same thing but faster if you could aim, so why not just get good at aiming? Weapon statistics and semantics aside, I'm gonna leave you with this real message. While I may have wasted that time grinding a weapon that ended up not even being as good as its counterparts, I still feel like it was valuable time. That was passive time spent playing a video game where I was getting to know my friends better. Yeah, I know, it was the Destiny 1 meme of the friend game, but it still holds so true. Friends make video games awesome, even when you're doing something as boring as Prison of Elders nonstop. So since I'm taking a look back in Destiny 1 anyway, why not reflect on the past? Whether we wanted it or not, we stepped in a war with the Cabal, and by the Cabal I mean whether or not Destiny 1 was in a real state of balance or fun, in its darkest days and its best days, I still played it. This was me and my friend's ritual game. When the game wasn't so enjoyable, some left, but some returned solely because of the friend group. We'd talk about everything. If I was having a great day, we'd talk about it. If somebody was having a bad day, we'd talk about it. If I had a college essay due and didn't know what to write about, we'd brainstorm ideas together. I'll go ahead and take the opportunity to thank Bungie for creating the atmosphere in which I could meet such awesome people. Thank you. And for those of you choosing the solo experience in Destiny, no shame, whatever floats your boat, but I implore you, please reach out, be friendly, and just talk to random ass people. You never know when you'll meet your new best friend. And we'll never know how many people deleted their perfect stolen pride wasting all that RNG goodness. Thank you for watching this video, checking out my channel, and being respectful in the comment section. You the best.